David Wyatt's going to join us on stage in a moment. He's the CRO at Ivan. Um, he's going to be talking about the lessons learned in a startup to IPO. A uh, bit of background on David. He's an experienced international leader who focuses on building A-class teams uh, with more than 20 years of experience under his belt. He's held leadership roles uh, with Data Security Org, PKWare, CRM platform MuleSoft, I've seen now part of Salesforce, analytics platform Databricks, and now joined Ivan. David also acts as a go-to-market and strategic, strategic advisor for ScalarPay. Would you please welcome him to the stage? Thank you very much. Hey. It was kind of interesting then when we were talking about talent and what we look for. Um, I think my biggest one is actually do what it takes and courage. You, you, like, you can't hire for that stuff. It's like you can't teach that stuff into people. It's generally trying to find people who've got that determination, the few and far between. And to that note, I'm going to have a bit of a proud papa moment because my little boy's 10. I hate people who do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Fuck it. My, my, my eldest boy's 10. I actually live in Jersey in the Channel Islands, so the schools are quite limited. And Sam had to go do a, an exam a couple of weeks ago on a Saturday uh, to get into this school. And it's three hours and an interview, which is a lot for a 10-year-old kid, right? And he worked his little ass off, and he was bricking it before he went into this exam. And uh, he got accepted today. And uh, <laughs> so... My wife, my wife Emma told me, and she, he, she, she, get, she showed him the email and he read it, and she said he was crying when he read it. And I missed it, because I'm always on a plane or doing stuff like this. And I literally pay rent in the BA lounge now, because I'm always in there. So, I need a, I need a favour, actually. Can you use your phone and video this? I need a favour. No, I want you to video this on your phone. Face your phone of these guys. Can you guys, I know it's a shitty ass, but I need a favour. Can you, can you guys stand up and say, well done, Sam, on three? Okay, on three. One, two, three. Well done, Sam! Thank you. You don't, you don't believe how much that means to me. I always miss the good stuff. Um, so I really appreciate that. Thanks so much. Okay, uh, I didn't actually get the memo. It was seven minutes, and I've genuinely got 22 slides. So I'm going to go as fast as I can. Uh, but go on, let's let's start the slides. And also, I wrote this in an email when I was just doing something. I didn't even I didn't really think it through. So I, and I thought, oh, fuck, I need to do something on building an IPO. So let's go. Let's see how we get on. Okay, do you want to go? Okay, so I googled it. I should have gone on ChatGPT. And I googled it, and this shit come up from Price Waterhouse. Sorry if you work at Price Waterhouse, by the way, but this is what people do at Price Waterhouse. I don't know what all this shit is, but this is what you do for an IPO if you're at PwC. Sorry, man. Are you, are you PwC? Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Do you want to? Okay. Have I offended anyone? Okay. Good. That's good. Okay. So this is what I saw, and I'm like, it's not about that. That's not about the journey to an IPO. It's not. Th th this is just the clinical stuff you go do. But the reality is, next, this is what you're looking at, a fucking abyss. <laughs> and you're like, where do I go fishing? There's all these lakes, and I don't know how to fish, I don't know where to fish, and that's where you start. So, as these guys mentioned, I was first on the ground at Databricks in Amir. Literally, first day was in my bedroom. I left, a thousand, I left there was a thousand people there. We grew, grew a great business, it was good fun. Similar story at MuleSoft as well, pretty much first on the ground there, group IPO, all that good stuff. But you start like this, and you are looking into an abyss. So then, next slide. I'm going to keep looking at my slides, got to remember. So you start getting some business, and you start getting giddy, and you're getting some revenue through the door, and it starts trending up, you start to get some velocity, and you start getting excited. But you still don't know where you're going, because pretty much gravity is taking you in a direction you don't know where it is, because you're looking into that abyss still, and... Generally now, today, in the world we live in, PLG motion is really strong, so people are signing up using your software. But you're not dictating where that is. You're not choosing your path. It just appears, and you're kind of following that gravity. So then, I don't even know what's on the next slide. And then, but the problem is, nobody knows who the fuck you are. <laughs> like, nobody knows who you are. So how do you go sell if you've not got any brand equity, any recognition? Like, I was at Databricks. I remember I'd been there for, like, three months, and... Uh, 
Clayton Samula, who's in here, working for me for the third time, God bless him. And um, we were at an event, and it was like 1,200 people at this event, and it was three of us. And we met 100 potential prospects, and two of them were in the cloud. And Databricks was cloud only. I went home to my wife, I was like, I've screwed up. I need to go find another job. <laughs> And, and finally, we started to sell to people in the Nordics, because the cloud was really emerging at the beginning of Databricks, right? So we really started to step up. It was pretty scary. Um, but we had to figure out our path and build our brand equity, right? So keep going. And what we had to do was we were like getting all these small deals through this PLG motion, which was all inbound, which is all great. But then we had to stack it up. And the hard part is, is getting all this SMB commercial business, which you still want to keep going, right? But you want to shift it into this enterprise quadrant, and they, you want to. And to do that, you need to grow the ASP, which is really hard work to do because you've still got the same products capabilities that you had before. So you need to think critically about how you go do that. Go on, keep going. And the way to do that is you've got to think about how you lead or define a category. That's how you make a difference. That's how you have impact. MuleSoft defined a category. Databricks have defined three categories. And if you're going to define a category, the one thing you actually want to do is make sure you're leading it. Because if you define a category, then you're the second best in that category. It's kind of shitty. So you want to be front and centre. You want to have the winning formula. And you want everyone to look at you knowing you're the best. You're innovating. Because constant innovation is the hardest thing to do. And to do that, you need to have a point of view. And you need to challenge the status quo. We've heard this twice already. And it is about challenging the status quo. It's kind of an interesting thing. I don't know if you guys have uh, done Challenger before. I'm pretty sure this is all motherhood and apple pie these days. But I love Challenger. I'm a big believer in it. I, I think it's great. Um, and Command of the Message gives us some similar structure about thinking of a, a point of view. But all we're trying to do is get people to move away from the status quo and get them to do the thinking they need to do to get out of their comfort zone to make change and transformation. But that means you've got to have impact and you've got to have a point of view. Keep going. And all these folks, typically, in this market, everybody wants to go for the safe option. So we want to move them away from the safe option with proof points. We want to move them away from the safe option with how we're going to change and make them transformative, and generally get an economic buyer who's going to be super successful and generally get promoted. I love seeing people getting promoted. It's a sign of success. Keep going. So again, Challenger, I mean, we use this. We use this at Ivan. I, we used it at Databricks. We did use Command of the Message as well, actually, combined the two. But um, I used it at MuleSoft. And it was the making of us because it taught us how to position different. In fact, we used this. The ASP, when I joined MuleSoft, was 9K. I, I, that was my expenses in a week. Like, we, 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 it was so low when we had to bring it up. We got it to like 60, 70K, like trending up. But it wasn't like going anywhere big. Then we got a 32K deal at Unilever. Uh, there's no one from Unilever in there, is there? Good. So, um, and it was a shitty deal. But we looked at it a different way, and we went in with a point of view, and we challenged them, and we took it to $2.1 million. That became a three-year relationship. That became multiplicative, and that was actually the bedding that actually was laid for MuleSoft to go to IPO. We then did a 40-odd million dollar transaction with HSBC, which is still the biggest transaction they ever did to date. So we'll join up. Shouldn't have gone for the beer before I came here. Sorry, Mum. Okay, keep going. So look, you've got to choose. If you go into, if you want to build a category-defining company and make a huge difference into, like what the impact that's going to be, you've got to make a choice. Like, you decide who you turn up, what you turn up to be on a Monday when you get in for work. Like, are you going to go and do something different? Are you going to go and, like, do something that's dramatically game-changing that's having an impact on the world? Or are you just going to be like the other guy? And I think that's what it's about. It's having a point of view. Keep going. Here's, the, like, this slide. I've used it about 18 times. And basically, these are the core tenants. I mean, you've probably seen these before, but these are my core tenants for any business plan I write. Defining a playbook, demand generation, building for scale, enablement, partner and business development, CSNI, and a hub and spoke model that's worked. This, this is exactly what we've used. This is the third time I've used it now with, with Ivan, and it's a rinse repeat. The playbook's written down, the formula's written down. Um, let's keep going. But you've got to be intentional in your motion as well. So when I joined Ivan, it was 100% inbound. The sales guys didn't even have targets. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I've never seen that. 
There was no reporting data. Like, it was crazy. But they got to about 70-odd million in a pure PLG motion. It's quite impressive, really. But we had to move it, and we had to move to an outbound motion with intentionality. And that's what we did. We also started to look at Ivan as a platform more than a toolkit, which is, a, a, is actually a, a big change for any company that's going to an IPO. Bringing it from a toolkit to a platform, it becomes a lot more strategic in the play. We used all the uh, med, uh, med pick, all the criteria I talked about before. We started to figure out where we're fishing with segmentation. We've got something called the Ivan 2000, where we're focusing on the top accounts. I know it sounds like a hairdryer, but that is, that is where we're targeting to focus. We started to look at business cases and templates and tools and capabilities we could use in the field that would really strengthen the play. Keep going. But we also had a plan. Like, you can't do anything. If you, it doesn't matter if you go off course on your plan, but if you haven't got a plan, you don't know where you're going. And I always say, Build a plan as quickly as you can, and try to have a plan for three years. So again, at Ivan, I was there for two months. I went to the board with a business plan for three years, and I said we had 250, you can see it on Crunchbase, we had about 250 million in funding. I went to the board, I said I'm gonna spend 270 million in the next three years, I'm gonna grow it to this, and they went, yeah. I was like, wow, that was easy. Because <laughs> I, like, I thought it was gonna scare them, but they were totally supportive. And you need to have a plan to do that. Like you might, you, you're going to have some twists and turns, but having that focus and knowing where you're going and having everybody else in your team knowing where you're going is critical. Can you go on? I made this slice myself. I did the graphics on this slide, would you believe? Um, but as, and so leading back to the platform before, many companies start by selling projects which are very tactical and very thin engagement with a very singular focus. We talked earlier, I think you said you're dealing with one guy, a girl, and how many of those deals come in. Strategically, when you're thinking about engaging in a platform, you're trying to onboard multiple players into your organization. And that's what you're trying to do, is build into a platform strategy. Next one. And these are all the things we pretty much load in together. And, and, and again, in each of the businesses I've been in, uh, all these capabilities are critical. All these things have got to be done, and it's a lot of hard work. You need to pull in all your key players to build the assets, the capabilities, put the structure and rigor, the KPIs, and all this stuff. I mean, at Ivan, we had to build from scratch. At MuleSoft, we had to build from scratch. At Databix, we had to build it from scratch. But having the right folks to go in doing that and executing on this and everybody knowing what that framework is, is absolutely critical to growth at scale. Keep going. Enablement, I'm a big believer in enablement. I love enablement people, but they're generally not very good at enablement. Is anybody in enablement here? <laughs> How many people have I offended so far? Look, I, I, I'm a big believer in it, but I think the best enablement people are you guys. Like, people who know what they're doing and have done it before are better at an enablement than enablement people. Enablement people do great stuff in terms of putting frameworks in place and programs in place. The best enablement people are co So, um, the CEB Council did a survey and it was, I think, inline coaching, as in one-to-one -one coaching, counts for about 80% of the best coaching that salespeople receive. And I, I'm a big believer in it, it's huge. Keep going. This is an eye chart and it's not mine. Chat GPT, you're amazing. Um, <laughs> orchestrate your team. It's a team sport. Like, everybody's got to know where their role fits. It's all about having a sales process, but unless everybody knows where they engage and what they do in that process, like, everything's got to be in lockstep. And if everybody understands that motion, we used to do QBRs at, um, when people used to meet up live. When I was at MuleSoft, we'd do it every quarter and we'd make it all about enablement. But even the talent team, the recruitment team, would come on that enablement as well. And the same at Databricks. Like, if you were hired, but if you were interviewing with one of our recruiters, I could guarantee you that they knew our playbook. There's very few companies do that because the talent team absolutely understood how, what we did and how we did it. Keep going. Uh, the ecosystem's an interesting one, and it's kind of the shift of scene going from... Um, SIs and GSIs, but to the hyperscale has been the center of gravity. That's been a huge shift, and I think it's absolutely critical to be absolutely aligned with those guys. And look, everybody is knocking on the hyperscaler's door. If you look at Marketplace for Amazon and Microsoft and, uh, and, and GCP, it's a minefield, and you're just another ISV. So you've got to think how you differentiate, how you position, and what's your point of view to those guys as well. Can you go on? You need a framework for rigor. So once you put in all your operation and think of all these capabilities and skills that you're giving to everybody, you've got to have an operating conduct that everybody follows. 
and it's respected because everybody wants to know that everybody's to operate into the same framework. Keep going. But most of all, this is a great team, most of all, it's about the people. This is the last slide, I promise you. It is about the people. It's all about the people. Hiring great people, enabling great people. I always say, happy, su successful people are the happiest people. So make them successful, and it's a team sport. So with that, thank you, James. <laughs>